welcome back to Bayou City Geeks, episode 44, take two, uh, <laughs> quarantine edition. I'm your co-host, Bobby Behar, and with me always on the other side of town is... Jason Elliott. All right, so, uh, got a few things to cover, short episode, but, uh, still big us. news. Uh-huh. I said still us. Still us. Um, so, uh, big news of the month, uh, was that Zack Snyder's Justice League cut, the Snyder cut, finally got released. Um, 21, 2021. HBO Max. Uh, I know this has been a very divided movie. I think oh, people yeah. have been very uh, back and forth on it. I love Man of Steel. I really, really like Batman vs. Superman. Justice League. I own it. I've watched half of it. Like, I saw it in the movie theaters. I bought it because the steel case was a cool uh, design yeah. by Jim Lee. And I've watched, like, half of it. Yeah, I've watched, I watched the whole thing on HBO. And, you know, the thing is, I mean, I still got the same feelings on this parts of the movie. I like parts of it. A lot of parts I didn't. So. And the stuff I didn't like were Joss Whedon parts. Of course, because the thing is, it's not like I don't like Joss Whedon, but... It's just that you change so much from the original vision. Yeah. Well, uh, not only that, but I like Joss Whedon. I, I like the, I love, I love the Avengers. I love Buffy, but that just didn't like work for Justice League. No. And, you know, the thing is, he came in, you know, what, what was it, midway through? Oh no! Not even, not even midway through. Like they don't. They already finished the 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 shoot. They were about, I'd say, seventy five percent done with it. Um. So he kind of came at the very tail end to to yeah. fix everything, but because Snyder's daughter, he had he had the the tragedy in the family and had a yeah, leave. family issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But now, because of that, now uh, HBO has given Snyder $20 million to do the ADR and the special effects to get Darkseid and Green Lantern in there and the Atom. Yeah. We're going to see Ryan Choi. Um, I'm eager to see that. I mean, I just want to see it because I've, I've heard so many things about it, seeing all the, the, you know, the photos and Jason Momoa and all the other actors and actresses are saying how great it is. So, I mean, hey, yeah. let's, let's see it. And apparently the, there's another uh, credit scene where Batman does fight Deathstroke. So that's how that got cut. I have no idea. And yeah, that sucks for Joe Manganiello. I mean, he committed himself to that part. I know. I know. Now, uh, that same special effects company has also been hired out to do uh, David Ayers' Suicide Squad. And and then uh, Paul Feig has also, yeah, we might get his uh, three-hour-long Ghostbusters from which I hope this shows uh, – studios to stop messing with movies. director's work yeah especially if Warner Brothers is really notorious for just making bad decisions well I mean the Batman vs Superman director's cut was better than the theater version yeah so once again I don't understand why I don't understand why they they mess with it in the first place but uh speaking of movies uh Marvel has three or two secret Marvel movies in the works uh Spider-Woman and Madame I think is yeah and, you know, we got, what, a jackpot movie coming, too? Which is, I think is stupid, but, you know, I'd rather see a Black Cat Silver Sable than a jackpot movie. Yeah, me too. I mean, especially after, you know, playing the, the, the games, the again, yeah. Spider-Man game, where Silver Sable and Black Cat factored heavily. And, mm -hmm. you know, Black Cat had her own, what, did she was pretty much the DLC. Yeah, she was. The main character the DLC, and then Sable, you know, figures uh, pretty heavily into that game, too. So, yeah, I mean, I would love to see Silver Sable, you know. Sometime enemy, sometime you know, I guess uh, ally. Yeah, she she. It depends on how however it works in her favor. Yeah, uh, and then and then uh, you know James Gunn will start working on Guardians as soon as he's done with Suicide Squad, and he has confirmed that Kraglin will be in Guardians of the Galaxy three. Which I mean, it's his brother. He's gonna yeah. cast his brother, um, and he'll probably be the mocap for Rocket too. Exactly as he always is. Um, on Disney Plus, uh, Muppets come out July 31st. Uh, it's not the Josh Gad Muppets, so I'm interested to see what they do with it. 
I, I would like it to be something like ABC had when they had the yeah, Muppets. Muppets tonight. Was it the was that what like it was like yeah. five years ago? That was Muppets. Well, oh no 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 no. That, I'm thinking about the '90s, the '97. No the no Muppets. the uh, the one that came out right after the movies. Oh yes yes yes, and it didn't stay on for very long. I think it was on like what on ABC. Yeah, it was on ABC for a season. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I like I. I like that one. I liked it a lot. I had a friend. I had a friend of mine who was in one of the episodes, played I think a security guard. Really, that's cool. Yeah. Man- Mandalorian season two comes out uh, this year. They're still on track. October. Is, is it October? I believe so. Yeah, I think they said October. Um, Tim- Timothy Oliphant has been cast, and he w- will be wearing Boba Fett's armor. So we're getting Boba Fett and Timothy Oliphant in Boba Fett's armor. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, I think he's playing a character from the expanded universe. Okay, that makes sense. Percy Jackson uh, is getting a series Seriously? in development on Disney Plus. I like the movies. I I don't see the. I, I didn't mind it at all either. I never got the hate and on the movies. They haven't really given too much information, so we don't know if Logan Lerman is going to come back. I I would assume they're going to recast everything. Yeah, probably Percy Jackson's going to be a kid. You know? Yeah, because you had you had Logan Lerman and Alexandra Daddario. Yeah, and Brandon T. Jackson too. And Brandy, that's right, Brandy T. Jackson was, yeah, that's right. New Mutants uh, gets a new release date of August 28th. So yeah. so this is one of these things where we'll see it when we, you know, we'll believe it when we see it. Exactly. This movie has been jerked around, jerked around. You know, Josh, I think Josh Boone is his name? Uh-huh, Josh Boone. Okay, they have been jerking this guy around, you know. The thing is, apparently he made a movie that was very scary, and it was like a horror take on, you know, the superhero genre, like a yeah. horror movie set in the superhero genre. Then they, they shelved it for proposed reshoots. Then, you know, they put it back on for a release date. Then it didn't. It got moved again and all this kind of stuff. I mean, just and, – and legally, they have to release it theatrically. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like, they, they, they pulled it for reshoots, and now Marvel's like, no, we're going to just, like the, – the first cut was great. Just going to sh- – which I think shows – They have faith in it. They, well, not only that they have faith in it, but it shows how much Fox messes with things. Yes. Because Fox like, oh, we have to reshoot it. Marvel like, this is perfect as is. Well, come on, man. Alien 3? <laughs> True. True. <laughs> Spider-Man 3? So, uh, yeah. oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not, not Sony. X-Men 3. There we go. Yeah. Dude, I have HBO. I have X-Men Dark Phoenix. Have not watched it. I, I have not watched it either. And I want And it was one girl. But you know this is going to be horrible. I know. I know. And, and this is twice now they've messed up that storyline. I know. It's like, it's like, just, just, the cartoon got it perfectly. How can the cartoon get it right and the movies mess it up? Well, here's the thing. In a cartoon, you had 30, you had 150 minutes, you know, you had, you know, 30 minutes an episode. So it did five parts. I know. I, I know. It was a five, it was TV. amazing five-parter. I loved it. I loved it. Um, now, speaking of HBO, great little segue that I did not mean to do. Um, HBO Max comes out this week. Hulu did send me an email saying, because I have HBO through Hulu. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're like, if you have HBO through Hulu, you get HBO Max. Just download HBO Max and then log in with your Hulu account. Huh. So, now, I'm wondering if I can log in with my Xfinity account because, you know, I have HBO and I pay, so, I mean, it's not fair if I don't get it. I think you should. Now, I know Peacock comes out this summer. And, and Xfinity course, customers will get it for free and yeah. earlier, too. Now, what's cool is I was going through YouTube because I was helping a, I'm helping a friend uh, edit their uh, a video they're doing, and Tony Shalhoub was on YouTube as Monk. Hmm. Doing a quarantine video for Peacock. Oh, that's awesome. I think so. I guess Monk will be on Peacock, which is awesome. Yeah, well, Psych is. Psych, uh, the Psych movie comes out. That's right. Um, now, jumping on to uh, a few DC properties. Uh, Ruby Rose is leaving Batwoman. Actors and actresses literally will kill to get a leading role in a show. She yeah. gets it. Now, I understand that she left because uh, she hates, she didn't hours. like the long hours. 
and which is health. required, which is required for even the supporting characters. Uh, yeah, exactly. You're on set all day, you know, just like, oh, hey, we got an idea. Come over here. Um, and I understand the, the mental health thing. I, she, she's long documented that, and I, I, I understand that and applaud her being open about that. However, Jared Pelecki has done, what, 25 seasons of Supernatural? <laughs> yeah, dealing with the same. Dealing with us, he's he's been very open, very vocal about his uh, anxiety and and depression and his mental illness. He's had a hit show for his what I think season fourteen. Yeah, is what they'll be, they'll be going to. Um, and apparently, like it was a mutual decision to leave. Like she was not prepared for the fandom. So you no. know, want someone who's more like enthusiastic. Well, she should have just known what she was getting into. I mean, the thing is, look, for all leads of, of a TV show or movie, it's built around you. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, yeah, you're gonna be on set, you know, 12, 13 hours a day. I mean, that's just how it goes. I mean, she's been in Hollywood long enough to know this. Well, I mean, she should have known this, but then you could have she could have easily asked, um, Stephen Amell, Grant Gustin. Melissa Benoist, you know, anyone on... on uh, and she should have been asking them, you know, when uh, when she was on set for that crossover. That yeah, did. like, hey, if I get a show, what, what should I expect? Yeah, you should have... She should have 100% asked them. Um, but, you know, we'll see about the recasting. I know Stephanie... B uh, Stephanie Beatrice? Beatrice? From Brooklyn yeah. Nine, yeah. Wants, uh, wants a cat. Wants to try at it. Um, I saw some actress from uh, uh, Krypton is like petitioning. Like I think if I think if someone is legit petitioning for a role, they understand the fandom and they're excited about it. Hey, hear them out. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, good God. Um, now, uh. I got excited about this. Legend of, Legends of Tomorrow got another season. Yes. I was happy about that. Like every, CW just screenlit all uh, their 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 superhero shows. Well, they, um, they like their shows. They, the audience it brings in. I mean, and plus, when you go to Comic Con, you cannot get near these guys. No. No. I mean, I've got near like David Harewood. Almost got um, what's his name? David Ramsey. Before well, some we idiot met, just we met David uh, Harewood. Uh, yeah, I bet David Harrow, but I'm talking about David Ramsey. Oh, Diggle, yeah. Almost got him, almost got McCod Brooks because, you know, he's a Texas boy like us from Austin. I always forget about that. It yeah, because I, really I think he was wearing some burnt orange when I, when I saw him. Is he really? I was trying to, and like some idiot, like I'm walking, and he just walks in front of me with, with the baby stroll. I'm just like, oh, dude. Stupid kids. Stargirl premiered uh, this month. Two really good reviews. Uh, Jeff Johns did a great job on it. Um, I'm going to try and watch it this week, and that way next episode I have like a review for you. No. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, now, the show that I still have not watched, but I had, I need to, Swamp Thing. Yeah, it's, oh, man. CW has picked up season one, and they're open to season two. I think that they need to move that to HBO Max. Yes, or move it back to DC Universe. I think what they're probably going to do is they're going to see how it plays to a wider audience. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, but <clears throat> it's really weird for me that they cut Swamp Thing from the DC Universe app right as, like, all the other shows are coming out. Like, why, why cut it so early? <laughs> like, they didn't even give it a shot. No, they, they just gave it one season, and then that was it. You know, it wasn't I mean, even a season. It was, like, you get, you know, after, like, one episode. It's supposed to be 13. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, but the thing is, they well, essentially, they did give it one season because the season was allowed to play out. But they were supposed to be, it was 10 episodes, they're supposed to be 13, 12 yeah. or 13. And then they just cut it to, so like, oh, it's too expensive, da, da, da. And I'm just like, okay. I mean, I know the character is kind of a tough sell. I mean, he's always been that way. Yeah. I mean, look, I've, I've seen both movies, you know, the, the good one and the campy one. The woman with Adrian Barbo and that infamous scene where she shows her boobs and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And I've seen, you know, the, the campy one, the kind of comedic one, you know, with Heather Locklear. Yep. I've watched the animated series. 
Oh, boy. I... <laughs> and I watched the USA show, too, which was, was actually really good. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the USA show. Yeah. And so, like, the thing is, this character has been one that has, you know, had a share of multimedia. You know, of course, the comics, you know, that great Al Moore run. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, what's his name? Um, the recent run. I don't think it was at, wasn't Alan Moore, but uh, I think it was. I forget the guy who did it. It was really good, and you know, with with you know appearances outside. I mean, it's just like some people do get the characters, some people don't. Yeah, he's a tough sell. But staying on DC Universe, Doom Patrol comes out HBO Max and DC Universe June twenty fifth. Um, That's great, huh? Right. Now I know that uh, DC Universe saw a nice thirty five percent bump during the oh. pandemic. Uh, they want to keep DC Universe going, but with like a much smaller like TV show base. So I think they are. I think they're. I think they're going to keep it for like the 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 movies and the TV, like the older TV shows and the comic books. Yeah. And start moving everything over to HBO Max. Um, but speaking of Titans, uh, Titans villain Deathstroke, S. A. Morales is the new villain for Mission Impossible Seven and Eight. And that's good, man. You know what? His, I mean, this guy's back on track. I mean, he was Dell and, uh, you know, Ozark. And, you know, he's got the Destro character. I mean, mm-hmm. this is good that he's playing the main villain because now he's going to, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen Bad Boys with Sean yeah. Penn. Good movie, 1983. Uh, he plays the main bad guy in that one. And, of course, you know, he was in La Bumba. <laughs> and uh, NYPD Blue. Yeah. He was. Um. Jumping back real quick to uh, CW, they have greenlit Kung Fu and Walker, Texas Ranger. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give both a shot. I'll give both a shot. Oh, yeah, especially Kung Fu for me. Um, both ordered, you know, straight series, so we'll yeah. see how they go. The Walking Dead <laughs> spinoff, World Beyond, will only get two seasons. Good. I mean... I'm happy with that. At least that. they have an end. I think that you need to... With a show like that, you need to have um, an ending... Because if you don't, uh, you're going to get like a Walking Dead situation where it just kind of keeps going and going and going and going. Well, and, and you know, paint yourself in the corners and all that yep. kind of stuff. And, yep. You know, kind of jump in the shark a bit. <laughs> Although I heard the, the latest seasons have been really a return to form. That's what, I, that's what I've heard too. My parents like stuck through like the, the, the kind of the, the last uh, three seasons. They, they said that it's gotten much better. So I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Um. And then, uh, Which we won't, we won't see an end to, to this current Walking Dead season until the fall. Uh, yeah. The, the, the finale that, we're, that, they, that everyone got was actually a, uh, just a regular episode. The finale is being saved for like a special episode uh, next season. Um, so, and then finally, uh, last two little, little hits. Uh, David Arquette will, will be reprising Deputy Dewey in Scream 5, which needs to be killed. Uh, Jendi Tarnikovsky's Popeye movie has been revived thanks to all the director's cuts being picked up. So, yep, and they showed, I saw the trailer for the Popeye movie that he had. It they, was actually, yeah, to the original trailer. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. Well, check it out. I, I, I love, like, you and I both love Jendi Jen Tarnikovsky's uh, works. I mean, Samurai Jack, Clone Wars, Primal, um, Dexter's Laboratory. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that the guy that did Dexter did Samurai Jack. Hmm. Um, and then finally, the Space Force trailer came out with uh, Steve Carell. Uh, that looks absolutely hilarious. Uh, he has a new movie coming out uh, with him and Rose Byrne, uh, directed and written by John Stewart called Irresistible. Oh, yeah, Irresistible. He plays Great a cast. huh? Great cast. Great cast. It's uh, about a Democratic political strategist who is trying to help a former veteran win the uh, mayorship in a conservative rural town. So that has that's gonna be hilarious. So I think I think Steve Crow plays the Democratic strategist. Uh, Gary Cooper plays uh, the veteran, and I think Rose Byrne plays his Republican uh, uh, counterpart. Hmm. So that that's gonna be awesome, um, and that's that's everything. There we go. Awesome. Didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. 
with that, everyone, uh, don't uh, just because everything's opened up, do not think that we're safe. Uh, uh, continue. Yeah, please, out. please. I Wash mean, your hands. We uh, we we here in Texas had eighteen hundred more cases when they started opening things up. Yeah. I think it was too soon to to do that, but hey, you know what? You know, when money is a motivating factor, you know they sometimes don't care. But exactly. wear your mask because it's not that hard to wear a mask. I mean, hell, you can go this buy will, them. And, I will say this, dude. This will be the last time you see me with a beard because I'm sharing it off because uh, for charity. <laughs> huh? For charity. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. I, I can wear the mask, but it gets really hot. And chafy, I bet. Yeah, and, and it just, like, it, like, sticks to the back. I don't mind that it sticks to, I, I like that it sticks to the beard. It doesn't move around. But um, it gets a little, uh, a little hot, a little hot in here. So uh, you might see me uh, clean, at least, at least, not clean shaven, but, like, down to the stubble. Going down to the stubble. Uh, the quarantine beard, I think this is as long as it's going to get. So I'm fine with that. Um, all right. With that. That's the end of episode 44. I am your co-host, Bobby Behar. With me, as always, Jason Elliott. Be safe. See you in the funny papers.